people of God, welcome to Change Makers International Assembly of the Apostolic Church, where we are molding lives to fulfill destinies. On behalf of our pastor and first lady, Bediako, we welcome you all to the month of August. This month is a season of new beginnings. Do not focus on the failures of yesterday. Start this month with positive thoughts and expectations because God is about to do something new in your life. If this is the first time of you joining us, we encourage you to be part of the great fellowship we share at Change Makers International Assembly. Days are the dates and events in the month of August. Command your morning every day by joining us for fresh oil Monday through Friday on the prayer line from 5 a.m. to 5.30 a.m. On Wednesday, we have School of the Word on a Zoom conference at 7.30 p.m. Join us to learn the Word of God together. We have midday prayers every Friday on the prayer line from 12 p.m. to 12.30 p.m. And at midnight every Friday, we meet on the prayer line from 12 a.m. to 1 a.m. to pray for our family, church, and loved ones. The In-Person Huddle Conference 2021 is coming off in September 10th to September 12th. All detailed information are on the screen. September is a remarkable month for CMI. Do you know why? By the grace of God, we will be switching from evening service to morning service in September 19th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. We are celebrating our 10 year anniversary, so please join us for our anniversary dinner slated for October 16, 2021. You do not want to miss this wonderful and special event. We encourage everyone to click on our Google link and write a review for CMI. Also, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share our YouTube channel and Facebook page. We encourage everyone to download the Church Center app and give generously to help the growth of the kingdom. Special thanks goes to everyone who contributed to the growth of the kingdom. God bless you. As you go throughout the month of August, I want to encourage you that never give up. Forget about the former things because God is about to do something new in your life. Be in the mood of expectancy because your greatest miracle is on the way. I am Winifred Sacco Entry. Until next month, see you my days.
Hallelujah. We worship him tonight. Open your mouth. Just worship him. Just worship him. Yes, invite the Holy Bible. Spirit here tonight. Amen. Somebody invite the Spirit Amen. of the Almighty God here. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, 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 holy. We call upon you, Holy Spirit, to descend tonight, oh God. Descend in our midst, oh God. Descend in our midst, oh God. We want to move with you tonight, oh God. We want you to hold our hands and move with us, oh God. 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 We invite you, Holy Spirit. Come and take control. Come and take control. For you are mighty. You are worthy to be praised. Tonight, we bless your name. We bless your name. We magnify you, Lord. We magnify you, O God. I want us to pray. The Bible says that Jesus asked Peter to cast the net. God has tasked us to fish. He said we should fish. We need to fish. We need to fish. We need to fish, meaning that we he has not tasked it with a specific fish, but he said we need to fish. This is what the Holy Spirit is saying. He said we need to fish. We need to go out there. We need to hold hands. We need to bring people into his house. It doesn't matter what they are into, but he says the rest, leave it to me for I will fix it. Yours is to go out there and fish. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Tonight, let us pray. Let us open our mouth. That God should empower us. He should enlighten us. He should open our spirit. He should open, he should give us the strength that we need. That everywhere we go, everywhere we find ourselves, that our net will be ready to cast. We will be ready to cast our net so as we can cut some fish. Open your mouth and pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Father, tonight, I just want to thank you, oh God, for your revelation. I thank you for the direction. Oh God, I thank you for direction, oh God. I thank you and I pray, oh God, that Father, Lord God, we as your children, oh God, we ask for your divine, 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 divine direction, oh God. Father, Lord God, I pray that wherever we go, oh God, Father, let your let your Holy Spirit guide us, oh God. Give us that strength, give us the ability, give us all that we need, oh God, that when we go out there, we'll be able to fish. When we go, you said we should leave the rest to you. Oh God, our job is to bring them, and you said you will fix them. It is not in our position, oh God, to determine what you want us to do, but it is by your grace, it is your authority. So, tonight, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, Father, bless your children, oh God, with that net, oh God, bless your children, oh God, with that net, oh God, so that they will be able to fish, oh God, unto you, Father. You need us, oh God, you said you need us, you need us to go. Out there and bring the souls of God. Father, Lord God, we can never do it without you. So, Father, tonight, oh God, arise, oh God, and let our enemy be scattered in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, we worship you. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He says, whatever you ask for, whatever you ask, whatever you ask, it will not be denied. So the Holy Spirit is inviting us tonight that we should ask him whatever we want him from him. We should ask. He said we should ask because it will never be denied. Open your mouth and ask God whatever you want. He said you should ask him and he will not deny you. Open your mouth, somebody. Open your mouth for the spirit of the Lord is speaking right now. Open your mouth and ask him. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Jesus, 
us, oh God. Father, you gave unto us, oh God, power. You gave unto us strength, oh God. You gave unto us authority, oh God. Therefore, what we need right now, oh God, is that strength, oh God. That double portion of your strength, oh God. That we'll be able to do what you've tasked, oh God. Father, help us, oh God. Tonight, we are asking, and one accord, we are asking, as the body of Christ, we are asking, oh God, that Father, you bless this church, oh God. Bless us. Fill this church, oh God. Fill this church, oh God. Fill it, oh God. Fill it, oh God. So that your name will be glorified. You have prophesied. You've shown to us, oh God, how it's going to be, oh God. We trust in your timing. But you said we should ask, and it shall be given unto us, oh God. We are asking tonight, oh God. Fill your church, oh God. Fill your church, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want us to pray. Commit all those who are on their way coming here. All those who are watching, wherever they are watching from, I want us to pray to God, to ask God to guide them, even as they are coming, even as they are tuning in. God should guide them, God should direct them, God should let His Holy Spirit descend, that everything that we are going to do here tonight, they will also be blessed. I want us also to remember to commit the preacher man or preacher woman into the hands of the Lord. We pray, we commit the praise and worship thing, that God himself will move through the, the words that he will give. That God will move. Open your mouth, somebody and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God, tonight, I commit all those who are on their way here to you, oh God. I commit them into your hands, oh God. That Father, you will guide them, you will move with them, oh God. You will protect them, oh God. I pray for those who are tuning in, oh God. That Father, Lord God, you will, you will, you will fix your, your spirit upon them as, as well, oh God. I pray, oh Lord, tonight, oh God, that whoever will preach tonight, oh God. Speak to the person, oh God. So your name will be glorified, oh God. I pray tonight, I commit the praise and worship unto the hands, oh God. That Father, you will let your angels join us, oh God. Even as we worship, as we praise your name, as we glorify you, oh God. Father, let your spirit descend upon us, oh God. That every, every song that comes out, oh God, will touch the heart, will touch the hearts of your children. And we know that they are going to be blessed in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. We magnify you. We exalt your holy name. We thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, I thank you, oh God. I bless your name, oh God. Hallelujah be to your name, oh God. Hallelujah, for we are nothing, oh God. Hallelujah, we bow before you tonight, oh God. Hallelujah, I call upon you, oh God, tonight, oh God, to touch the hearts of your children, oh God. Even as we are about to do what you have uh, tasked us to do tonight, oh God, we ask for your direction. We ask for your guidance. We ask for your Holy Spirit, oh God, to descend, oh God. I pray tonight, oh God, that Father, the sick will be healed in Jesus' name. The sick will be healed in Jesus' name. The poor shall be elevated in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. I pray tonight, oh God, that Father, Lord God, anyone who seek your presence, oh God, shall find it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, oh God. Father, your word says that he who call upon me, I shall never turn off from, away from him but I shall listen to him and I shall bless that fellow tonight oh God we are calling upon you in the mighty name of Jesus oh God descend right now oh God and let your children be blessed in Jesus name amen God bless you somebody God bless you Hallelujah, we bless his name this evening. Hallelujah, we bless the name of the Lord this evening. We give him all the glory. He's here with us. Amen. Amen. We're here to give the Lord an excellent worship this evening. That's all we really need to be doing, to give him an excellent worship. So I need you to tell your neighbors or talk to yourself and say tonight I'm not going to be distracted by anything. I'm here to give a Lord, the Lord an excellent worship. That means you need to sing with all of your heart and with all of your mind. That means you need to be focused in the spirit, okay? Don't let this, the kids distract you. Don't let your neighbors dance steps distract you. You need to be focused. Be intentional about your worship this evening. Amen. We're going to be joining the angels to sing. So 
don't don't be distracted if your neighbor is singing off key don't don't be distracted sing like everybody's gonna sing like we're gonna be singing in heaven amen amen, amen. amen. hallelujah amen yes holy 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 is the lord god almighty worthy to receive glory worthy to receive honor he's worthy to Day. Isn't he worthy tonight? Say holy. Holy, holy, holy. Come on, sing. I want to hear your voices. Holy, holy, holy. Don't be shy. He wants to hear it. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. He's worthy, worthy to receive glory. He's worthy. the Lord tonight. Say you holy, 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 holy. Lord, you are holy. Holy, holy, We worship you. We can never be holy like you, Lord. Holy Holy is the Lord God Almighty. Holy is Yahweh in our midst. You are worthy. Father God, you're worthy. For all your goodness, you're worthy.
you turn the story around. Yes, God, you are worthy to receive all my praises today. Hallelujah. We bless his name this evening. Hallelujah. I just want to encourage you. I don't know what place you are, but God is still answering prayers. He's still doing a work, and he's still doing mighty things. Hallelujah. Amen. I was encouraged. I was encouraged as I was preparing by the story of Peter in the books of Acts chapter 12. When the king wanted to show off how good he was to the Jews. And he really wanted to show off that, you know, he's really out for these Christians. And so he had killed some people and he had then captured Peter. And he was about to put Peter to public trial, just like they did for Jesus. And he was like, I want to make sure this is a very public trial so that I can really disgrace the church. I don't know who is setting you up for disgrace tonight, who's holding you down. And so the Bible says that the king actually took Peter to prison and he made sure he set enough guards to put Peter down. He really did tie Peter up and he put some prison, uh, some some uh, some soldiers beside him and so he was tied up between two soldiers and there were camps of soldiers after the prison gate to make sure that Peter will not escape. The Bible says, but the church continued in prayers. But the church continued in prayers. We have been praying. I don't know if it were you. And I'm sure through all of that, the church was wondering, but God, when are you going to come? Is this thing really working? What is going to happen? But the Bible says the night before this trial was going to happen, an angel showed up in prison. I don't know if the angels, what the angels did of the God fell asleep but the Bible says that Peter got up and the angel walked Peter all through the many different soldiers all of his chains were off and he continued his work I'm telling you tonight that there is power in your prayers there is power in your prayers don't get tired okay don't get tired. I don't know who held you down. I don't know if your situation is like the situation of the demon possessed man who people tie down every time just to keep him down. I don't know what your issue is, but there is power in your prayers. There is power in your prayers. Do not give up because at the last minute, the Lord can show up in such a way that the impossible becomes possible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is power. There is power. Come on, sing it like you know it. It will destroy every chain. It will break every chain. It will break every chain. Break every chain. It will break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. There is power. There is power.
whereby we might be saved. It will break every chain. It will break every chain. It will break every chain. It will loose you from every bondage. He came to set the captives free. Even the lawful captives. It will break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Oh. We declare, Lord, whatever chains are holding your people down tonight, in the name of Jesus, that you break every chain. We declare that every chain be broken. Every chain be broken. I don't know if it's a generational chain. I don't know what's been spoken over your life. I don't know what's been holding you back. Every time you take two steps forward, you take ten steps backwards. Lord, that you will break that chain that people have used to hold them back in the spirit, Lord. That you will break every chain. That you will rise, oh God of war. That you will rise, Jehovah Sabbath. Come, Lord, with your army. Come, Lord, with your army. Break every chain. Break every chain. There's an army. There's an army. of God's powerful angels. There is an army. They're rising up. They heard your cry in the night. They're coming to break every chain. They're coming to break those chains in your life. To break every chain. They will break every chain. Lord, you break every chain. Lord, you break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Oh, some of you might be saying, my chains don't even seem that big. I don't know if I should come to God with this chain. It might be something as simple as a relationship that you need to get out of. God is telling you to get out of this relationship. You know, there's a covenant you made with someone you're struggling to get out of it. You are thinking of all the consequences of it. And God is saying, I can help you break that chain. That ungodly union, I can break it. Oh, you will break every chain. Yes, God. Everything holding your people back. You will break every chain. You will break every chain. You will break every chain. To break every chain. Break every chain. Break every, break every chain, break every chain.
tell you about the way maker. Hey. God is a way maker. That means there are some paths that people did not know. Wait, wait, wait. There are some paths that some people did not know existed. You know, you brought your situation before some people and they've looked at all the possible scenarios and they've come back to you and say, there is no way that this can actually ever happen. And then God says, I made the heavens and the earth. I make the impossible possible. In fact, I make the world out of nothing. And so I know the routes that these people don't know about. And the Lord starts to carve a path specifically for you. And so when it happens, people start to wonder. I didn't even know that that was possible. But that is our God. He's the way maker. He's the way maker. That is who. Mountain. He can move a mountain. My 
There is a shifting in the atmosphere. The drought is over. Now is the time of overflow. Our season of great refreshing. The windows of heaven are open. It's time to receive and walk in divine favor, mercy and grace. Let's advance to take over new territories for the Lord. There will be a new zeal for the work of the Lord. Every area of our lives will experience goodness, love, generosity. We will continue to engage our community and family with the love of God, molding lives and fulfilling destinies in this season. Welcome to Changemakers International Assembly. And now, get ready for the word of God as we welcome God's servants. Please, with a shout offering and a start innovation, let us welcome District Pastor, Pastor George Abuaje. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. amen. Oh, somebody, amen and amen. amen. We give God the praise for what he is doing in your lives. And I am very happy to be here to join you in fellowship and in worship. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. It's been quite a long time I came on visit, but I thank God that I am in your midst. The work is getting plentiful, so we are all over the places, and we thank God for another chance once again to come back here in the North Jersey. We love what the Lord is doing in your lives, and we encourage you to continue. The good God who has started the good works in you will crown his name, and you will see the power hand of our God. So don't give up. I have been in your shoes before. I have been at this level before. Talking about 10, 14 years ago when I took over Everton, only 10 old people came to my house when the then pastor left the church with the whole crowd. These old, they are old. Like you're talking about 50. Maybe. They came to my house and said, please, elder, lead us. I said, no, I'm going to New York. I can't lead you. You're all old. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I mean, I can. And after they left, sitting in my couch, and I was crying. So look at these old people. I have a strong love for God, looking for the leader. I told my wife, what do we do? He said, but how are we going to pay our mortgage and pay the building? Only eight people, maybe they are not even working. I think we have to go to New York. I said, no. I mean, I can't turn my back towards these old people. I can't. And I remember one of the sisters said, please, elder, lead us. I know that by the grace of God, someday you become a pastor. So lead us. It was a prophecy that woman was prophesying upon my life. So I told my wife, I can't turn them down. I can't. Even if we have to leave that building and start the service in our basement, we would have to do it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We were 10. And gradually, 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 one day we were in a service, and 10 out of the people who left came back. And we asked them, why? They said, well, we left on our own. We have come back. Praise the Lord. Could you believe the very year that the old people were begging me to lead them. It was that same year at lunch fundraising. And my wife was asking me, what are you talking about fundraising? I said, yeah, we're going to do fundraising. With these people, I said, yes, we're going to do fundraising. What we're going to do is print more envelopes, give it to the old ladies, let them go and distribute it and bring money. And that very year, my fundraising, first fundraising, I raised $20,000. Wow. And I never stopped. I did it for four times. And of the fourth time, I was able to get it $115,000. Wow. And it will move on into this property. So don't despise small beginning. God understand what he's doing. I have gone through this. And I know what God can do. Right now, I'm standing here. I am burdened in my spirit to leave everything, 
go somewhere in the south and isolated area, begin another service. Praise the Lord. Because I trust that the same God who was what the early church, the early Christians, has never stopped working. He is still on his global mission. And as long as you can pitch that flag or that canopy and say, this is the canopy, this is the altar for the Lord. Trust me, he's everywhere. He will come and glorify his name. So, tie up your belt. You know, when I was sitting here, all that I'm yearning for is we got to get out of here. We need our, that's my phrase. We need to get out of here. As soon as I entered the room, I said, this room is a little hot. And then when we, we, when we were singing, I feel the vibration of the building. And I remember when Apostle Lomote, his friends, his first his first night he came to my church. And my guys can dance. Somebody can jump and his head will hit the ceiling. And the building was shaking like this. At the end of the service, he called me and said, young man, I think we got to get out of here. I said, yeah, I know. We're going to get out of here very soon. So as I was praying for you that we get to get out of here, that thing came into my memory. I said, Lord, you know what we need. I trust God. In due course, he's going to move us into our own place. So be ready for that vision, for that dream to come into pass. Shall we pray? Father, Lord, we want to thank you for a gift of life. It is by your mercies that we are all living. Have brought us together as one family. We thank you, Lord. We commit our hearts and our minds into you, O God. Come and tonight speak to us. Come and teach us, O God. Teach our heart and our minds. As your word is coming forth to us, O God, prepare our heart so that your word will have a fertile grounds in our heart. Go deep down in our heart. And even as we're going to ponder over it, it will bear fruit. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Oh, somebody shout a big amen. I just want to discuss something with you from the Gospel of John, chapter number 13. John, chapter 13. We're kind of going to read from 1 to 20. The Gospel of John, chapter 13, we're reading from 1 to the 20th verse. Read along with me, please. Jesus washed his disciples' feet. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave his, this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his altar clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his feet, drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, you are going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, do you, not re you do not realize now what I'm doing, but later you would understand. Verse 8, no, said Peter, you shall not wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless... I wash your feet. You have no part with me. Then Lord Simon replied, Not my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Somebody shout, Amen. Amen. Verse 10, Jesus answered, Those who have had bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean and you are clean. Though not every one of you, for he knew who was going to betray him. And that was why he said not everyone was clean. Verse 12. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord. And rightly so, 
for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another, another's feet. Verse 15. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Verse 18. I am not referring to all of you. I know those I have chosen, but this is to fulfill this passage of scripture. He who shared my brain has turned against me. I am telling you now before it happens, so that when it does, so that when it does happen, you would believe that I am who I am. The last verse. Very truly I tell you, whosoever accepts anyone I send, accept me. And whosoever accept me, accept the one who sent me. Shall we say amen? amen. And this is, uh, I just want us to kind of have a little teachings here. I like preaching. I seldom teach. <laughs> Pastor is laughing. But let's, let's break this into pieces. Uh, in a John, the Gospel of John, which is the fourth gospel, we call something farewell discourse. Jesus has realized that his time is running out. In the very moment they were going to arrest him and slay him, kill him, then hang him on the cross. So time was running out against Jesus. So in the farewell discourse, some call it final discourse, others call it upper room discourse. And in this discourse, Jesus had gathered his disciples in the upper room and they were about to eat Passover dinner. And those of you who are familiar with the Jewish, they have a Passover uh, festival that they ce celebrate every year to commemorate the salvation, the greater deliverance that God brought to them by his mighty hand when they were living in Egypt back in the days when they were enslaved, they were heavy burdened, and they were heavy taxed, they were shipped. All kinds of uh, atrocities were, were given to them. And they cry out for God's deliverance. And the Bible says, by the mighty hand of God, God delivered them by slaying all the firstborns of Egyptians and saving the Israelites. And that motivated, that moved Pharaoh to let them out of that slavery. And when they crossed out the border of Egypt, God told Moses to tell them that henceforth, every year, they should celebrate that deliverance. They wake up in the morning. Every a firstborn of every animal, every human being were dead on the street. Every family in Egypt were crying, but they were saved. Nothing happened to them. So it is a great festival that Jewish people celebrate every year. So that very day, they were celebrating that festival. And the next day, they were going to kill the uh, 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 Passover lamb. So uh, evening before, families have gathered together, just like we do in America here, we do a Thanksgiving dinner, and people travel from across all over the places and uh, unite with their families. The same thing took place. So they are eating Passover dinner, and the next day, in their history, in their memory, in their remembrance, the Passover lamb will be slain. So Jesus, being a Jewish man, knew this culture, knew this festival. So he himself had girded his disciples so that they can also eat the Passover dinner. Somebody say amen. amen. So Passover dinner was preparing. Bear in mind that Jesus also is the Lamb of God, whom God had set aside from before the foundation of this earth to be slain for my sin and your sins. 
And that very night, they were celebrating a Passover feast where a lamb was killed. But what took place in Egypt was something that was foreshadowing what Jesus was about to do. Hallelujah. So it was a shadow of what took place. Remember, God told them, pick up a clean animal, a clean lamb and kill and mark the lamb's blood on your doorpost. And in the night, the spirit of death is going to blow over the city. And when he sees the blood, he won't pass by. And that is how the people of Israel were saved from that great destruction that blew over the country of Egypt. Hallelujah. So that was something that was going to take place, but God was giving them a glimpse of it, an image of it. It was typifying what Jesus was about to do. Hallelujah. So as they were sitting in the Passover dinner, the Jewish boys among, I'm talking about Peter, John, Andrews, and, and all these guys, they were just remembering that lamb. But they didn't know that the real lamb of God was among them getting ready to be slain and the betrayer was marking time because the betrayer has cashed the money on Jesus' head. So the betrayer is satisfied with the deal, but John, Peter, and other people didn't know what was taking place in the spiritual realm. But Jesus knew himself that, yes, that's my betrayer sitting right there. We call it a farewell discourse. And in this discourse, Jesus has brought them together because it is the last moment. Two years ago, I was going to Ghana, my mother's funeral. And my daughter was 20, 19, 20. I call her secretly to my bedroom and I pull one of my drawers and I pull the book that I record all my passcode and I give her the will, my life insurance and everything. I say, this is my bank number, this is this, this is this. And you know what? As we are leaving, don't egg you with your brother. Love him like mommy love you because now you are like a little mother here. And she was like, why, daddy, you think you're going to die? I said, no, I'm not going to die, but anything can happen. Should anything happen, I'm traveling with your mom. Should anything happen, you are not left in the dark. Yeah, yeah. That was my... Hallelujah. Amen. This little girl be like, what is this, dad? Showing her love. Preparing her for uncertainty. Anything can happen. Jesus was preparing them. Because in the twinkle of an eye... The enemy who had at that time filled the betrayer's heart will show up. And Jesus didn't want them to be confused. I quite remember when I was in high school, I was writing a paper, uh, a, a, a BK paper. And my topic was that a shepherd was strike. I mean, the, the shepherd was strike and the flock were dispersed. That was the question. And I have to write essay on. He was talking about Jesus being the shepherd would be arrested and what will happen? The flock will disperse. They would run away. Jesus didn't want them to run away just running for running sake but telling them that yes, indeed, it is going to happen. So the first word this course purposely was to prepare the disciples for the immediate future, for the succession of the ministry of Christ. Because Christ knew that he was going to leave. And once he is gone, they have to take over. Even though he was going to rise up, but being human beings, they were going to fall with his immediate disappearance. So Jesus had to prepare them to be on their toes. That's why I told you from the beginning, I have gone through what pastor is going through. I have started a church with 10 people before. So I know how to have small and I know how to have medium-sized number. So what I'm seeing is nothing to me. There are many Sundays that I will open my church. I don't have this number, but I don't lose heart. Jesus knew what he was doing. So he was preparing them so that nothing would dismay them. Oh, hallelujah. So he was telling them that I am going to die and I'm going to rise up. And when I rise up, I'm going to go to heaven. And when I go, the Holy Ghost is going to come. 
When you see that I'm being arrested, don't lose heart. It must come. Because if it doesn't happen, I can. I can save you. That is the only way I can save you. At that point in time, Jesus knew that the betrayer, Judah Iscariot, had already collected the money. Jesus knew that his father has given everything under him. By him all things were made. There was nothing on this earth that was made without Jesus. It was made by him. It was made for him. He is on top of everything. He is preeminent to everything we can think of. And the father had already assured him. Remember Jesus said, Father, glorify your son. And the father said, I have glorified my name already. And I will glorify my name. Change makers, the Lord would glorify his name in your life. And he will glorify again. Somebody shout, Amen. So, I know I'm a son of God. I know my father loves me. I know he has put anything under me. I know I'm going to be in pain because I am God and human being. But the most important thing is that my dad will not leave me. I know I will see decay. I know I will go into the grave. But I won't remain there. Hallelujah. I will rise up. And yes, years back before Jesus came, David even prophesied about Christ who will be died but would never see corruption because he would rise up as never corrupted. So he was preparing them in this discourse, which is the farewell discourse. This discourse is not recorded in the other uh, synoptic gospels. It's not recorded in Matthew, Mark, and, and, and Luke. So had it not been John, the disciples Jesus loved, we would have mixed these parting instructions that Jesus was giving to uh, his disciples. You know, like I told you, my daughter, when I was traveling, when every family members are traveling, don't you prepare your family? Yes, that's what Jesus was doing. But had it not been John, the apostle, the disciple Jesus, he called himself the disciple Jesus loved. Had it not been the disciple Jesus loved, we wouldn't have known this important uh, 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 farewell uh, uh, discourse or instructions that Jesus gave. And it is not only the instruction, it also contains the high priestly prayers that Jesus offered. You know what I'm saying? The farewell uh, uh, discourse starts from chapter 13 of the Gospel of John all the way to 17. And 13 is the preamble, the prelude. That is where we're going to pick up the washing of the feet from. So the 13 is the preamble. And then the 17 is the postlude or post uh, 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 discourse, which is the climax of the farewell discourse. And it is in the 17 that Jesus offered his high priest prayers for the church. And if you read chapter 17, Jesus said, I am praying for you so that you will be one with one another so that the world, the unbelievers will know that we are one and we are Christians. We are Christ's people. Change makers. We have to love one another and show that love to one another so that the people in Garfield will know that we are Jesus' people. We are Jesus' followers. So the fair witness cause start from 13 and climbs at 17 but then the 13, which is the preamble, the prelude, that is where Jesus demonstrated a very important celebration, which is very important and worthy of emulation in our Christian faith. Bible says, when they were all sitting down reclining, and then the Passover meal was in progress. They were all reclining, and the disciples that Jesus loved, John, was very close to Jesus. The mouse was ready. I believe these people were so hungry. And that's one thing that I hate on Thanksgiving dinner. I can see the food. I can see the turkey. I can see everything. My wife won't let us get to the table. We were waiting for this person. We were waiting for that woman. And she's all over the place trying to polish it. I said, oh my gosh, I'm hungry. 
I believe that is what was going on in their life. They've been long waiting for the meal, but they're waiting for somebody to come and wash their feet. Hello? In their tradition, there was a feet washing, which is a traditional thing that was going on. When you go back home, there are some places, if you go into somebody's living room, you have to take your shoes off. Right? And I've been here for a while. I, didn't, I, you know, I, I don't go home so often. So the last time that I went home, I was so confused. I didn't know what to do. Sometimes I go to people's room, then I realize that I, don't, I can't come to their room. I go outside. I quite remember one time, we went to the house and I took my shoes off, right? And I had my socks on. When we came and I forgot how to put my socks, my shoes back on, I was walking away. <laughs> I was a confused man. Hallelujah. So in their culture, there was a feet washing. That when you go to everybody's home, your host has to give you water and a towel to wash your feet. So she said, for my next time I come on a visit, I need a feet washing service. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, and, and, and the Bible says most of these tags were given to slaves and servants, like rich people. You know, rich people, most people have servants in their homes. So when a visitor comes, they want the servant to go and wash the guest's feet dry before the guest would come to the living room. That was what was going on in their culture. When they came in, nobody washed their feet. I don't know where the servants in that house were, or maybe that house they didn't have a servant. Nobody washed their feet. I don't know about this, but I'm thinking it would have been a taboo that if you come from outside and you don't wash your feet, you can't eat. So they were probably waiting for somebody to come to help them and wash their feet so that they can join their Passover meal. Everybody say Passover meal. So, Bible says, as they were all alert, looking at the dining table, ready for the dinner, there comes the rabbi, there comes the teacher, there comes Jesus Christ, the Lord and the Savior, the miracle working man. Took off his cloak, and then, I don't know where you get the towel from, but he grabbed a towel around him, collected water in the basin. They were looking at him, what was he about to do? Was he about to wash his own feet or what? And then he called to Peter. Peter, come, because you are the next after me. Peter, come, let me wash your feet. So he went to Pastor Bediakon, wash his feet, and he moved to my mind back there. Then he go to the next person. When he get to Peter, Peter said, Lord, you can't wash my feet. You can't wash my feet. Why do you think Peter said that? Now talk to me, church. Come on, my CPA. <laughs> In America here, bosses do the, the lowest job. Okay. So why do you think Jesus is doing this? Okay. Thank you. Praise the Lord. What do you think Peter said? You can't wash my feet. You're too big for this work, right? Yes. Indeed, Jesus was too big for this work. This work is for servants. This work is for slaves in a house that we have purchased them. You are the rabbi. You are the teacher. You are the high priest. You are the Messiah. You are God. You are the creator. You were there when you had died. Created everything. Everything was created for you and by you. What are you about to do, Jesus? I mean, if I were Peter, I would say the same thing. And Jesus said, Peter, if I don't wash your feet, you are not part of me. You are not part. Why do you think Jesus said, if he doesn't wash his feet, he's not part of him? He has to wash everybody's feet. He has to wash my feet. He has to wash your feet. He has to wash everybody's feet feet. And Peter said, Jesus, it's not only my feet, but the whole body. 
And Jesus said, if you read John chapter 6, verse 68, Peter was confirming that you are the son of God, the Messiah. So, Peter, you have already confessed Jesus. You have already accepted Jesus. Yes, Jesus knows that you are already clean. You are already born again. You have accepted me. So, you just need your feet to be washed. To demonstrate something in the physical realm that has a very significance on the cross and in your Christian life and in your salvation process. So Jesus took the towel, washed Peter's feet, dried it off, put the towel back. Moved to Sister Ufoma, washed her feet, rubbed the towel back on him, moved to Sister Safo, the, the TV sister. Hello. Wow. Until he finished washing all of them their feet. What Jesus was doing was that he was demonstrating that I have come to take your sins in my body. Are you going to tell me that if you wash somebody's feet and, and dry it off, there won't be any dirt on the towel? And he put it back on him in his own skin. The word of God says he carried our sins in his body onto the cross. And the Bible says that Jesus Christ became a curse so that through him we shall become the righteousness of God. The Bible says curse is the one who hung on the tree. Why he became a curse? He became a curse because he took my sin. Those women that cheated back in the days in Ghana took their money. Didn't marry them, but I promised them. But Jesus took that upon himself in his own body and take it to the cross so that those accounts that were a stigma in my body, in my life would be removed and it would be placed on Jesus so that he would carry it on the cross. Somebody shout a big amen. amen. Jesus did that. A job that was for a slave. When you do rabbinical studies, he said it was rabbinically and it was religiously unacceptable. It was unacceptable religiously. It was unacceptable. It was not allowed. It was forbidden for a priest to do a mania job that is for slaves and servants. So it was not accepted that Jesus call himself a teacher, a rabbi, would do this work. But Jesus, being God, always breaking protocols. Jesus doesn't care. Once he is doing to serve the purpose of the Father, to serve the purpose of humanity, he doesn't care whatever traditional arrangements that you have in place. He is going to break that protocol for the sake of saving his people. You are not here by accident. You are not joining this church by accident. God has a specific plan for you. You are not here somebody by accident. By the time the church will blossom to its peak, you are going to see the glory of God. Somebody shout a big amen. amen. Friday, Wednesday Bible studies and one sister was talking about me on the line. He said, when we started this church, when we were few, Pastor had fought. And Pastor wanted to teach every woman in the church how to drive. And Pastor took me one time. And Pastor said, no, sister, at this point, you got to get, get your own car because my Ford is dying out. And she said, Pastor, you should have taken a picture of that Ford. Praise the Lord. Those times, we were going through a tough time. I'm going to drop this sister. After I taught her how to drive, I'm going to dra drop her off to work in Kenny so that I can also go to my work in Livingston when I get on one and nine and then my car is like you are cooking. Steam is coming out like crazy. Praise the Lord. 
It's very hard. It came to the point that we were not using antifreeze anymore. We were using regular water like we do in Ghana. And I had a gallons of water in my car. So when the steam came out, people were driving and looking at me. I go and open a hood and pour my water. A gallon of water is going to take me a couple of miles. And I know by the time I get to Livingston, I would have used about three gallons of water. In spite of all, we had hope in Christ that a time will come, we will pack that car and we will change cars. Hallelujah. So if you are joined this church, this is our beginning. You have not seen how we're going to get back. You haven't seen it yet. You haven't seen it yet. Pastor Bediak, I wanted to pray this prayer. I was so confused at that time that those few people who were with me, the young ones, may leave. So I pray to God. I say, God, open their eyes. Let them see what you're about to do. And God be began to open their eyes. And it was so crazy for them. Every now and then, they would go, Pastor, I had a dream. Oh, I saw the dream. You were preaching in the locker. I said, praise God. God is seeing it. <laughs> they became so attached. Because now it is not me telling them. They have seen it. I pray that God will open your eyes. Amen. I pray that God will give you a special dream. Amen. So that you understand the vision amen. of this church. Somebody shout a big amen. amen. So to ramp up, Jesus did this. Wash all their feet as we just read from chapter 13. And said, as I have washed your feet, you also go and do the same thing. Jesus was about to die, and disciples are taking over the church. So Jesus is telling them that this is how I want you to service one another. This is how I want you to treat one another. Those who have not become Christians, those who have not believed, when they come, this is how I want you to treat them. When new members come, let us open our doors, just like Pastor was talking about doors. Let us open our doors and receive them because that is the commission, that is the assignment Christ has given to us. Somebody shout a big amen. Amen. There was a need. They're waiting for the food. Somebody got to do it. Nobody was doing it. And Jesus had to do it. He emptied himself from who he was. He put his status down. And there was a need. So he jumped and do it. As long as it was in the service of others. As long as it is helping others. As long as it is fulfilling the purpose of God in the lives of others. Let's do it, change makers. Amen. That is how Garfield City will get to know us. Amen. That is how the city will run to us. That is how we will have more people in the church. That is how they will see that we have extraordinary love. And they will come and learn from the love that we have. Amen. What Jesus did... I think I'm preaching. I thought I was going to teach. I'm doing both? Thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. What Jesus did was an act of servanthood. He demonstrated servanthood. A master servant. Everybody say master servant. master servant. You are a pastor, but at the same time, you are a servant. I like the servant part. I don't want people to be calling me too much pastor, pastor, so that my little head won't get big within my brains. So I like the servant part more. Honestly, he demonstrated his servanthood, his servant spirit. Let us do that. Let us serve one another and gradually we will grow. It was an act of hospitality. It was an act of hospitality. Let us receive new people. Let us open our doors. Let us open our arms and receive them. When service is over, when corona is over, let's give people a hug. That alone is a ministry. Let's hug people. When you go to other churches, when the service is over, people are sitting on the platform like kings and Egyptian mummies. They won't get down. Get down. Go down. Hug people. Shake people's hands. Talk to people. 
Encourage people, touch people's shoulders. Let us receive them. Let us show hospitality. Sometimes bring something from home. Sister, I brought this to you. And it will help. Oh, hallelujah. If you don't know the person's name, when the service is over, run to the person. Today I saw my wife running to the sister. I said, where did you go? He said, yeah, I saw this sister. I never met her. And she, she, she left too early, so I was chasing her. I said, yeah, 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 you got to chase them. You're doing good. Keep it up. Chase them. We need them. They are important. And as we are serving, servicing them, that is how we're going to get our reward Amen. in heaven. Oh, praise the Lord. It was an act of humility. Jesus humbled himself. Sometimes, Sister Ophelman, we have to put your CPA down and service. Let's put the degrees down. Sometimes the degrees are important. Hallelujah. Sometimes they are important. Sometimes we have to lift them. Sometimes we have to show them for people to know that, yes, we have also worked hard. But sometimes we have to lift them down and work. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. A guy who preached in my church said today, this morning, he took a low position, a low profile position for some reason known to him. And then when they interview me, like, you have more qualification than this. Why? So they refer him to another department and then another department. Then they ended up creating a position, new position, the first time they have created in that company, it's a pharmaceutical company. They created new position for him that is far better than where he is that he is getting away from. That's a way maker right there. That's the God that we serve. So let us humble ourselves and serve one another. And as we are doing, God will glorify us. As I'm bringing my message to an end, when Apostle Paul was writing to the church in Philippi, in the Philippians 2, uh, uh, chapter, chapter 2, verse 5, through the ninth verse, he was telling them that in our relationship with one another, let us have the mindset of Christ, who was in the form of God, who, even who was God. Because if you read John 1, 1, he says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. So he was God. But he did not consider himself to be equally with the Father. But he emptied himself. Everybody say empty. Empty, empty, yourself. empty yourself. But he emptied himself and took upon himself a servanthood. And the Bible said, even unto the cross, he kept quiet. Never altered a word. Until he finished every work concerning my salvation. And we have salvation. Now we can chest out and say, we are sons of God. Hallelujah. Amen. We are sons of God. I had a dream this night. And in my pulpit, I was worshiping and worshiping and worshiping. And as I was worshiping, there was some manifestation taking place. People were roaring over behind me in my pulpit, in my podium. People were rolling over. And I saw it and I said, okay, when I'm worshiping and people are rolling over, I'm going to be singing like I'm crazy. So all I'm doing is I'm looking at them, I'm singing, I'm praising, I'm worshiping, and they're rolling, they're rolling. When I wake up, I said, wow, this is what Jesus can do. When you give your life to him, even in your spirit, you will be fighting. Back in the days, you dreams and people were chasing you. Now I dream and when I'm worshiping, there is manifestations. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. Our God is good. Let the mind of Christ be in us, change makers. If we do that, our church would flourish. Garfield City would become members of change makers. It will be like a woman of the Samaria who entered Samaria city and brought the, the cloud to come see Jesus. Unto him who know you, who created you fearfully and carefully, who know you by your name and has sealed your salvation. May that lamp of God who was slain and covered on that Friday for you and I, may he cover you with his blood. May he empower you with his spirit. 
May he begin to open your eyes and begin to let you have a wonderful dreams. May he open your intellect. May he open your spiritual eyes so that you can see his glory. May the Lord help you to serve others. May the spirit of servanthood fill you up so that everywhere you go, because of you, people will glorify Jesus. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Amen. And uh, on behalf of all CMI, we thank our district pastor for squeezing some time in his busy schedule to come and bless us this evening. We appreciate you and we bless God for your life. And indeed, we know that the Lord is doing something good. And the Lord is going to expand and the Lord is going to bless us. Amen. He's already done it. We are very hopeful that there are greater things that he's going to do in our lives. Amen. 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 Shall we humbly be on our feet even as we ask Madam Winifred Safo Entry to give us the closing prayer. And then we will ask our pastor to give us the benediction. Amen. Father, we want to thank you for this evening. We bless your name for such a wonderful service. We commit our lives into your hands as you go, go throughout the week. We pray that the divine Lord, may you protect us and guide us. Whatever is a hard desire, may you grant it unto us. We commit those that are not even here into your hands, that you will preserve them and you will bring them back next week so that we can have great and wonderful fellowship. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. We are heads of the Father. We are joined heads with the Son. We are children of the kingdom. We are family, we are one. Acts chapter 9 verse 31b. And walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, they were multiplied. Amen. Shall we receive the benediction? May the Lord bless you all and keep you. May the Lord bless you and then cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you in all your endeavors. May the Lord bless you and then give you his perfect peace. Amen. Amen. Hey there, we trust you were truly blessed by the sermon. We would love to see you at one of our services soon. Check out our website at www.changemakersnj.org for all of our contact information, meeting times, and ways you can give to support the ministry. God bless you. Sing with me now. Look at me.